All right. So I had a question on a previous video about setting up the Everlast 211 SI for MIG welding. And uh, I realized that in my previous video, I didn't actually show setting it up. So I pulled the MIG spool out and I'm gonna basically just act like this is the first time I've ever put wire in it and kind of show you how that goes. So there might be a little bit of camera movement, but uh, we'll see what we can do here. Okay, so the side opens up just like a standard MIG welder and uh, you basically have the main components that you always have. So you have the spool holder right there. You have the, the wire guide and wire drive. And it's all metal in the Everlast machine. That's one thing they're very proud of. Um, and then up in here you have the bus bar. Now the bus bar is just if you want to switch from MIG welding to flux core welding. And right now, on the positive, it's set up for MIG welding. And if you wanted to do flux core, you would have to change out the roller right here for a knurled roller. Everlast sells that for $20. I've contacted them about it. Um, and you'd, you'd switch from this post right here, or you'd switch from down here to over here, but you leave this one in position. Just loosen both. It's really easy to do. But, uh, yeah, if you want to go with flux core welding, um, the machine is fully capable, I just don't have the knurled roller that goes right here. So, if you want to start putting a uh, MIG wire in here and to get ready to weld, I'm just going to throw this back on the tripod and show you how to get that done. Okay, so I have a 10 pound spool here, it's about halfway used. Um, but right here you get this uh, nut and pull it off. There's a spring inside of that, so don't let that fly out like that it's not attached in any way but take this this will also work for two and a half pound spools um, I have one of those somewhere nonetheless um, to put it on a 10 pound spool you do the long side into the side of the wire like this so go straight in like that and you want to make sure that the wire is feeding off the bottom of the roll so if it's looped like this, you want to make sure it's coming out to where it'll feed directly into the wire carriage. So get your spool, go ahead and just set it on there and get this and it'll, it, there's only one position that it'll go in on. So you don't need to worry about aligning it or anything like that. Okay. So I have the spool on here, and then the spring goes on, it goes around that center piece, and then with the nut facing out, you screw it on like this. And it's not, you don't have to tighten it very much, the spring keeps tension on it, and if you over tighten it, you can have trouble with it spooling properly. So I have the wire tucked through here, that's pretty much how it comes, but you don't want any kinks in it to feed it through. So before I unloop that, because if it unrolls, it's a real pain to get it back to going. So I'm going to show you the front of the machine and how you hook up the uh, MIG gun. So evidently this is a very standardized connector right here. Um, basically it's the two, the remote controls, the gas line, and then that's where the wire feeds through. So you literally just stick it in the one direction that it goes and you can, it's pretty easy to figure out. And then you just tighten this nut down onto the front of the machine. And then you're gonna wanna take and remove the nozzle cover and the tip so that the wire can feed through. If you hit a snag on that, you can sometimes mess up your liner or you get a bird's nest and that's that's never fun to clean up. So, let me get this off. Okay, so then after you have that done, you can just set your torch aside for a second, or your MIG gun. Set it over there. And you actually want to get your 
uh, wire feed carriage right here and pull this lever down and that allows this to come up and there's no way that it'll tension the line as it goes through. So I'm going to set the camera back on the tripod and show you how to feed the wire through. Okay. <clears throat> so take your wire and make sure that you don't let it undo because that can really be just awful. And you're going to want to clip your new piece. If you have a MIG welder, get some MIG pliers. It's worth it, trust me. Um, the wire feeds right here into this little coiled piece of metal all the way through and you'll see it come out here and you want to kind of push it down with your finger through there into that brass receiver and I'll do a close-up of that in just a second okay so you can see the line in there and the brass oh come on now alright so that's where the wire goes through it fits in one of those grooves this is 035 wire or 030 wire um, as you can see there and after that's done simply push this assembly down and flip this up should look like that and then you don't need gas for this part but just turn your machine on put it on an appropriate MIG setting so just like this and turn your wire feed speed all the way up and make sure you're not grounded out to anything and just pull the trigger and it will automatically spool the wire all the way through the gun make sure there's no kinks in the gun because that can cause issues but just keep going until it starts coming out the front and wait until there's about three inches out and you'll feel it as it gets close going through the handle alright there you go so it's out now I'm gonna set this on the table so take your excess that's out there and feed your nozzle contact tip through that's kind of a pain I flattened that a little too much so just very lightly crimp this and then snap it off. So take it like this and feed it through. Go and screw this in. Yet again, you want to do it snug but not overly tight. Everything in the machine, it can be just finger tight for the most part. Slip your nozzle cover over and that's your perfect stick out. So that's how you set up the machine to MIG weld, and uh, I use pure CO2, and I can just show you a quick example of that real quick, and I'll uh, pause the video and then be right back with you. Alright, so I have my machine set up to MIG weld, and I'm just going to do a quick test pass real quick, and uh, just show you that I got it set up right. I have my CO2 bottle set up there, it's probably not the safest location for anything, but uh, hey Eddie. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of welding here and just show you what's going on. Now this is on uh, 120 voltage, so the maximum inches per minute is 400 and the maximum voltage is 20. I have it set on 18 volts and 324 inches per minute. And I'm just going to do a little quick blast with it. You want to set it around 20 cubic feet an hour is what I've kind of heard. A little less is fine, a little more is also fine. Uh, MIG welding is not, I won't say it's not that picky. I'm just more of a TIG welder, so I don't really know all of the finer things. Oh, I almost forgot. You got to set up a ground for this. <laughs>
This machine uses uh, DENS 50 connectors, so it's just a bayonet lock style. Obviously, if the wire is positive, then I'll be putting the ground on negative. And uh, plant the ground just wherever you want. And here we go. These might not be very good settings, but... Yeah, not the best settings. Let me turn up my voltage a little bit. Alright, so now I'm up to 18.7 and 325. That's a little better. So, just to show you, I mean, that's just a quick setup. Nothing fancy, just doing little loop de loops. And that was that middle section of weld. So, yeah, the Seal Everlast 211SI. Great little multi process machine, MIG, TIG, stick. I strongly recommend it.